Our scripture today will be found in the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 29 to 12, 2. You're welcome to follow along in your pew Bible if you would like to, or you just read it up here on the screen. Uh, let's pray. <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for this reading, for this word which you, are, which you have give, given to us. We ask you, Lord, that your spirit of grace opens up our hearts and our minds, that we receive whatever it is that you have for us, be it challenging or encouragement. We also pray today for your mercy upon the expounding of the word on the sermon. May it too be used for you alone, and anything that is not from you is forgotten. We thank you, Lord, for your glorious love in this moment, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 to 12, 2. Hear now God's word. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell after the army had marched around them for seven days. By faith the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, and Jephthah, about David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength and who became powerful in battle, and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. There were others who were tortured, refusing to be released so that they might gain an even better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were put to death by stoning. They were sawed in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted, and mistreated. The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and in holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Since God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before Him, He endured the cross, scorning its shame, and set down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Preparing the way. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 11 is a, a fairly well-known chapter in, in, in the uh, Bible. Um, psalm 23, you know, right? 23rd Psalm. Um, so that's kind of well-known. First uh, Corinthians chapter 13. The love chapter, you know that? Love is patient, love is kind. Uh, that's from first, it's also a fairly well-known chapter. Uh, th- this too kind of has its own description. It's known as the Faith Hall of Fame, Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, it runs through the he- he- Hebrew Bible, the, the Old-, Old Testament, and talks about all the people that have come before and all the ways that they had, had uh, lived. Um, now, I've, I've seen this sermon done before uh, on this scripture, and I absolutely loved it. It was in um, sem- 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 seminary. A woman had got up and spoke about this, this chapter, and, and as introduction to the chapter, she talked about the church and what she sees when she sees the church. She said, I look out into the pews, and I see men and women dressed in T-shirts and shorts. I see some wearing glasses and sandals and, and starts to describe the clothing that she sees. And then she goes on to say, and I see a young man sitting over there wearing a zoot suit. Um, 
you know what a zoot suit is? Anyone have a zoot suit? I want to see it if you do. Wear it for me. Uh, it would be impressive. Uh, 1920s or so, uh, very fashionable during the time. Big wide shoulders, small waist kind, kind of thing, zoot suit. Um, she also went on to say, and I, I see a woman wearing a, a, a summer dress with a, a big frilly white hat with flowers on, on, on top. Um, you can bring that back too. I, I think uh, it would be wonderful. She goes on and on and on talking about the, the style of dress from different times that she sees sitting in, in the uh, pews. The illustration was poignant and, and wonderfully pre- pre- presented, much more so than what I just did. Um, she's very elegant, and she went all throughout all the dec- dec- decades uh, to, to, to way back. Um, the point of it was that, and, and I've told you this before, um, Trinity United Methodist Church is not the body of Christ. It's not the church. It's part of the church. Part of the body of, 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 of a Christ. Other parts of the body are the other churches that are celebrating worship with us this Sunday. Uh, are those churches that celebrated worship on, on Wednesday. There's other uh, people out there that are celebrating and worship God wherever they are. They too are part of the church. We're all put together to make up the body of Christ. However, even all the churches in all the world today, all around this earth, are still not the entire body of Christ. Because if God is eternal, so is the church. And so that was her point. That the church transcends time. That those who came before are just as much a part of the church as we are today. What Hebrews chapter 11, the Faith Hall of Fame reminds us, is that these People who lived by faith according to God's Word helped to create and be foundational to what we see today. That they have a part to play in our life in this very moment. The Jenga Tower that Drake and I built today. For God, that church was built layer by layer upon the foundation of God's love and God's Word. God meticulously created the church layer by layer, row by row, block by block. With great love and dedication, God poured God's love and very self into what we see today. It's a, it's a glorious message and wonderful as we look at these men and women who obeyed God in some very difficult times. They stood up for what was right, what was just. They stood up for for their Heavenly Father and later for their Lord Jesus Christ so that we can be in the knowledge of Christ in this very moment. The interesting thing is, however, as we look at these men and women that that this Faith Hall of Fame mentioned, None of them were perfect. In fact, many of them were far from perfection. Social media, as we know today, likes to look at individual people and find the worst in them and put that out there so that we can keep on seeing that. If we would do that, we could do that with each of these individuals. Moses uh, murdered a man on his first day when he realized that he was actually an Israelite and, and he tried to be a savior to the people, so he murdered a guard and then subsequently ran away and disappeared, trying to not be in the limelight any longer. When God did finally call him, specifically, he made excuses for why he couldn't do it. David of course, is an easy one to, to pick, pick at. Committed adultery with another man's wife, and then when he wouldn't play along, had him murdered. And then his uh, fatherhood skills were very poor. He didn't care uh, much. He loved his kids, but he didn't have much to say about them or to do with them. And they, um, they had a rough time, a very rough time. 
And, and there are many others. Uh, Rahab, as is listed here, is a, a, a prost- prostitute. None of these men or women are perfect in any way. However, the reason they made it into this Faith Hall of Fame is that in spite of their imperfections, they trusted in God when it was important. They trusted in God when the chips were down. When all else seemed to fail, they knew that God had all the answers. Because of that, because of those moments in their life, they trusted in God. We get to be standing here today and sitting here today and worshiping God. However, when we look back at the church, remember that Jenga tower and I said, you know, this can represent the body of Christ that God had built? I think when we look at the church today, we don't see that nice Jenga tower. We see maybe something that looks more like this. Holes in it. About to topple at any moment. Church today doesn't look very important, uh, very, it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look perfect at all. The church today has made many mistakes and almost seemingly toppled over at one point in history or, 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 or another. If we were to have a Jenga Tower representation of the United Methodist Church today, it would look far worse than that tower looks. It would be swaying back and forth in the wind and everyone would be afraid to, to stomp anywhere near it for fear that it would fall. Even though the church today seems rather shaky because of the, the imperfections that are within it because the church is made up of people. We can still rejoice because as Hebrews 11 reminds us, the church is still loved and blessed and created by God. The church is still not created for a moment, but created for all eternity. In spite of its shakiness, God will still hold it up. God will still make sure that it stands. God will still make sure that it grows. The neat thing is, though, however, as we look at this cloud of witnesses, this one here, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, that we see people who have witnessed to their faith and lived their faith. It reminds us of this, that it's our turn. It's our turn to put a block on the Jeng, Jeng, Jeng guitar. It's our turn to now place our lives. And the thing that we want to do is the thing that everyone before us has wanted to do is to make that as foundational as possible. To trust in God with our faith in such a way that those who will come after, and there will be others who will come after, will be able to know what God's love is as we know what God's love is by those who have come before. Generations down the line. That church, whatever it might look like, whoever is in it, will be there because of God. Because of God, through us. We are laying the groundwork today for those who will come next. I pray that we do so through faith in, in, in uh, Christ. Because that faith is sure and certain and does not waver. And does not just, 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 just disappoint. Because Christ is with us always. And we can be very thankful for that. Part of that, that faith and that knowledge that Christ is with us, regardless of how topsy-turvy things may look on the outside, is that one of the ministries that we do here in the church is um, a blanket ministry. Um, blanket and shawl. And some of these blankets uh, go to new- newborn children. Uh, the shawls go to... Um, um, People who have been through difficult things, uh, cancer, lost a loved one, uh, sick, ill, whatever it might be. And uh, people in the church make these blankets. If you would like to be part of that, uh, let me know and we'll point you to the right direction. Um, And so we're going to pray for these blankets. That 
they who receive them. Understand the faith of, of, of Christ and know that they are, are loved. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these blankets which were made in your name. And Lord, we bless these blankets. We ask that you bless the persons who will receive them, whoever they might make may be, that they may know that they are not alone, that they may understand that they are in, in, indeed loved, thought about, and prayed, prayed, prayed for. And pray, Lord, that they're able to see you, to gain strength in whatever moment they are, are, are in, and to know that they're able to get through it, whatever it is, with your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for your love that we can share freely with others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I leave you, I leave you with this benediction from Romans 15, 5 to 6. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice Glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ.